Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This is the first in a series of videos that will explore the potential of the light electric vehicle and problems that limit their use. This first video will look at the issue of theft and ways that it could be reduced and overcome. A bit of background first though. I believe that we really need to enable light electric vehicles as fast as possible. And I think that they have tremendous potential to help our societies confront some of the biggest challenges that we face as a species. I think that enabling light electric vehicles is something tremendously positive as well, which can have hugely beneficial effects for all societies and all ages of people. But there are some pretty huge stumbling blocks that we need to overcome. This is a huge topic to talk about, so I'm going to break it down and then link all the videos and discussion via our website into a more coherent structure. This first video is about theft and ideas for solutions to mitigate vehicle theft, which is a chronic problem that faces all light electric vehicle owners. And I'm not going to differentiate here between e-bikes and scooters, motorcycles, trikes, buggies, tuk-tuks and many more. They are all light electric vehicles and they all suffer from the problem of theft. It's going to be very difficult to encourage the uptake and use of light electric vehicles if you're constantly anxious that someone's going to steal your transport at any time. Who wants to take their light electric vehicle out if by the time you get back with your shopping or the movie is over, some thieving git has stolen your ride? The main issue is that the vehicles are by their nature light and therefore easy to pick up and throw in a truck. They very rarely come with any kind of theft prevention devices beyond standard things like simple keys or the locks that you can carry with you to chain them up. I think that this is a problem that can be addressed at three levels. The first is the vehicles themselves. The second is infrastructure for parking security and the third is monitoring and police response. So let's start with the vehicles themselves. If I was spending over $5,000 on a light electric vehicle, and this is on the low end for quite a lot of things, I would want the anti-theft and vehicle recovery as front and center of the design. And it simply isn't. Even really expensive bikes, like a $10,000 plus specialized or a $10,000 cake bike, has no features as standard that are available either to make theft like harder or less palatable or to make the bikes easier to recover. On a car, you have immobilizers and steering locks, integrated GPS tracking, motion sensors, and you can add some of these things, but it's not by design. And it ought to be easy with electric motors and controllers to have it so a light electric vehicle not only cannot be ridden off with, but that cannot easily be made to work by a thief even if it's been thrown in a pickup truck and driven off and they have time on their hands afterwards with no pressure. I think that anti-theft features should be built into both the motors and controllers that cannot be deactivated without disassembly, perhaps keyed to a rider's cell phone. Tracking that would mean that the frame needs cutting open or major disassembly to remove. Steering locks that are built inside the frame and require disassembly to remove. These things would make the vehicle a huge pain in the ass to steal and then sell if they were part of the design from the get-go and functioned for the user from the day that it rolled off the production line. I would pay for that like 100%. Like, if it got around that light electric vehicles were essentially not operable after being stolen, they would be much less desirable to steal in the first place. Many companies make both the controllers and the motors. For example, KO Motor have a controller and motor. ASI have controllers and motors. QS motor have controllers and motors. So it should be pretty easy to key them together and implement anti-theft locking devices that lock down the motor unless the owner is using it. These would have benefits for safety as well beyond the limits of theft concerns. Um, the second area, let's, let's look at um, infrastructure. These vehicles are small and easy to throw in a pickup or a van and take, even if they are not ridden off with. There is no lock that you can buy that will stop a thief using tools that they can get from any old hardware store. But I think we can easily create parking and storage infrastructure to foil thieves and not really for that much investment. Right now, if you take your bike somewhere, you have to lock it to a metal stall or similar structure with locks that we know are crap and easily cut or broken. We can change that so we lock them into solid cages with multi-point locking doors. One that has other security features, one that's monitored with cameras, that guards that patrol car parks anyway can keep an eye on. Like every office building in the land could have secure pods that light electric vehicles could slot into. They could even charge for them. And because light electric vehicles are much more compact than cars, you get four or more 
in the same space that a regular car would take up. Infrastructure costs money, but it costs a hell of a lot less money and resources to make secure parking pods for light electric vehicles than it would be to build out a hydrogen-based supply chain. If a thief has to cut through a cage with alarms and cameras with the chance of a guard and patrol catching them, then they are much less of a target. We have no problems covering the ground with parking spaces for cars. What about putting in smart infrastructure for light electric vehicles so that people feel confident that they will not be stuck without transport because their vehicle was stolen? The last part to look at with this is monitoring and police response. And I commonly hear all the time that police don't care about bike and e-theft. It must seem like that to people when you consider the stats, like only a tiny percentage of these crimes get solved, less than 5%. The issue is that it's really hard to solve the crime and resources are spread really thin. Bikes are easily moved, changed, resold and stripped for parts. However, if it was easy for police to track and recover a bike, they might be less desirable to steal because the recovery rates would go up. We have no problems linking our homes to security monitoring companies that then alert police and do tracking. Why can't we use the technology for bikes? Surely there is profit for a company that will monitor your bike, track it and report it when it's moved to your cell phone. Ideally, these would be options that came as part of the bike package. The company could then even work hand in glove with the police, alerting them and guiding them to a stolen vehicle. They could use the statistics that will come with this and that will be built up over time to detect patterns of where and when bikes get stolen, where they're taken to. They could identify criminal organisations with these patterns and make more effective use of police time and resources. If people have the confidence that their vehicles will not get stolen, then they will get used more and more, and that can only be a good thing. If you are interested in some of these concepts discussed here, or you have ideas, please get in touch and leave your comments. If you know of companies going the extra mile, please post links. There will be a special section on our Discord community to discuss this topic, and there'll be many more videos in this series as there are lots and lots of areas in which light electric vehicles are being limited and held back. It's not just theft that limits their usage and uptake. As always, a huge thank you to the people that have joined the High Voltage YouTube channel. Your contributions make a huge difference to the running of the channel. And thanks to everyone for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.